ain't ne- I ain't never seen anybody play like Michael Jordan. Everybody's a distant second. He didn't need all these super teams to win. Michael Jordan is the GOAT. Ooh, man. So, Avery Johnson put his two licks in the GOAT conversation. On his, um, whose show was that on? Oh, yeah, Mark Jackson's uh, podcast. He was on there speaking about who was the GOAT between LeBron and Jordan and maybe some others. And he said Jordan, and everybody's a distant second. Some people will agree with that. Some people won't. We already know who. We already know the ones that won't agree with that one. Sorry, I try to talk like Avery Johnson. I used to do it back in the day. My whole voice hurts trying to do that. But he said something very interesting regarding Michael Jordan once again, other than calling Michael Jordan the GOAT. And this this whole thing. If the Bulls would have kept their team after 98, would they be able to get back to the finals, which would have been the shortened season, lockout season? Would they have been able to get back to the finals and then play the eventual San Antonio Spurs, who came out that year out of the West? Originally, we all know, or some of us might know, it was the New York Knicks, the eighth seed New York Knicks. And like I said, Avery Johnson was on Mark Jackson's show or podcast. And they talked about it. And we all know Tim Duncan. They had Tim Duncan and David Robinson. And we know the Bulls center-wise. Eh. Jordan never played with a all-star or superstar type of center during his career, which is even more impressive. But they won't give him that. But anyways, going to what A.B. Johnson said, I guess Mark Jackson brought this up. Mark Jackson recalled Avery Johnson's comments about the 1999 Spurs team taking care of the Bulls in seven-game series. The 99 champion couldn't uh, recollect when he made such a statement but stuck with it nonetheless. He confessed that the duo Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen was too much to handle but still backed his Spurs to get the job done. As we all know, some of us might know who are old enough. Gen Z probably don't remember. Avery Johnson was on that 98-99 team that won against, uh, beat the New York Knicks and started, I guess you could call it the Spurs dynasty, even though they never won three in a row, but he started the Spurs dynasty of winning. But anyways, shoot, my computer's going down. Johnson revealed how they wondered, or how they wondered which version of the Bull squad they was going up against as they won from 91 to 93 to 96 to 98 with different flavors. The former Spurs guard acknowledged that defending Jordan was nearly impossible. However, he firmly believed that regardless of the Bulls championship team took on the Spurs, Duncan would always put up a form of a fight. <clears throat> At the end of the day, Michael's Michael. Scotty is Scotty. But then we start to get to the other end. We start to get the rest of it. And then it's the first Bulls or the second Bulls team. Really and truly, they will have no answer for Timmy D. Who was going to guard T? We can't guard Michael. Nobody in centuries of basketball could, of basketball could guard Michael. <clears throat> Ooh, man. Everybody thought doing that. Why? He didn't go deep into how the 99 Spurs would triumph over the Jordan led Bulls. Johnson confessed his love for fantasy in such scenarios. We all know Tim Duncan's fundamental post game would give anybody trouble. Shoot, gave the Lakers trouble as well. Even to a defensive dynamo like Dennis Rodman. He and Robinson could have been a tough duo during the postseason situation. Apart from that, Timmy D will also provide tremendous defensive cover against the duo of Michael Jordan and Pippen. But Johnson's take largely stems from his love for the team, which he spent 10 seasons with. While the duo Tim Duncan and David Robinson... The Twin Towers was spectacular during the 99 title run. The Bulls appeared to be more of a well-wanted team. And unfortunately, Jordan and Duncan never clashed in the playoffs, of course. Uh, so that ends the article. Pretty much. It would have been a tough series if the Bulls would have kept their team and got to the finals the next year. 
it had been a tough series. I think I spoke about this before. But in reality, as great as Jordan was, and I also think I had taken count of Jordan was older too. Uh, it had been hard for the Bulls to beat that beat that team. It would have been. Because Tim Duncan was young. And you got to remember how he wasn't a super athlete, like crazy athlete, but his footwork and his versatility, they would have a tough time with that. And Dennis Rodman can't hold everyone. Can't hold both Tim Duncan and David Robinson, and even though David Robinson was a little bit older, but still, that would have been a tough one for the Bulls to accomplish. And it would have been a tough one. Now... Going back to that team, who was even on that 99 Spurs team? I can't think of the top of my head. Who was on a 98 Spurs team other than those three that was mentioned? Let's see right quick. 98-99 Spurs. Who was on that team? Of course, it was coached by Greg Popovich. And it's still been Phil Jackson. So... That team had Antonio Danos, Mario Ellie, who also called Jordan the GOAT and said no one was close. Uh, Sean Elliott, I think Sean Elliott was coming off that kidney ailment. Andrew Glaze, Jaron Jackson, Jaron Jackson Jr.'s dad, of course, Avery Johnson, Steve Kerr, which they would have lost, Jerome Kersey, Gerald King, Will Purdue, another Bulls, David Robinson, Malik Rose, and Brandon Williams. And looking at this roster, uh, yeah, Spurs would have had their hands full of trying to hold Jordan. But it's the same thing with the Houston Rockets, too. They would have had a tough time with the Houston Rockets with Hakeem. And they definitely would have had a tough time trying to beat this Spurs team with Tim Duncan and David Robinson. I, it, it, would, it probably would have to go seven games and come down. To the last minute. This would be the first time Jordan had to play in the game seven in the finals. And dang, Mike Bootenhood was on that team too. Coach you. Um, let's see here. Look at everything. Look at every statistic. Look. Bulls, Spurs with 37 and 13, winning 74% of the games. Of course, it was a lockout season. 8 And they swept conference semifinals against the Lakers who had Shaq at the time and Kobe uh, and then the conference finals they played Portland swept them they only lost one game in the playoffs and that was against Minnesota with KG and then in the finals they played of course the Knicks and they lost one game and Tim Duncan was an absolute monster. 33-16 one game, 33 and 16 one game, 25 and 15 the second game. Uh, the game he lost was 89-81 L. David Robinson scored 25, led away. But game four, Tim Duncan scored 28 and 18. Tim Duncan also scored 31. And David Robinson got 12. Who was even on that Knicks team? Because I know the Knicks, that Knicks team did not have Patrick Ewing because he was hurt. Or he was, uh, he, he wasn't the same Patrick Ewing. That Knicks team had Rick Bronson, Marcus Camby, which was a defensive player of the year. One of those years, his years in the league. Chris Childs, Ben Davis, Chris Dudley, like I said Patrick Ewing, Allen Houston, Larry Johnson, Latrell Sprewell, Kurt Thomas, Charlie Ward, Herb Jones, and David Wingate. Uh, to fantasize this and to end this video I will have to say it will be seven games some of them probably close I know some probably would say the Bulls would probably win that but as great as Jordan was, and how old he was at the time, he would have to go crazy at his even at his age. 
And they would have to pick up some type of size in the offseason. Can't just rely on David Robinson. I don't know about Luke Longley holding Tim Duncan. I don't know about that. Like I said, it's 50-50. Some people probably pick the Bulls to come out on seven. But I had to say the Spurs would probably edge that one out. It would be a freaking close, exciting game seven in the NBA Finals. So, but anyways, tell me what you guys think. 